So Mike, tell us something about field hygiene. Oh, where do we begin? Look what's going on with these viruses and all of these scares. People uh, purchasing toilet paper because field hygiene, what are you gonna do with your dirty toilet paper if there's no power, right? I don't know, that's a little short-sighted. Break it down to off-grid, you're in your natural environment, the natural environment. And one of the first things that people are going to gravitate towards is water, because we poop in water, don't we? And that's the worst thing you can do. Field hygiene is nothing less than applying nature literacy to your life sustaining systems. And so you're gonna have to provide an area for shelter, water, fire, which can be expressed as light and warmth. And then finally, at the end of that is food, All right? Which is a concern because systems need to be in place to avoid contamination of your food as well. But let's start with the foundation. Your shelter area needs to be well drained. You're not going to allow any food in your shelter area. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Not just spoilage and bacteria, but rodents, flies. Hygiene in general is going to degrade rapidly if you don't have strict protocols around your shelter area. Look for hazards before you even start construction. Yeah, yellow jacket nests in ground, but also those dead standing trees even 30 yards away can fall and kill you in the slightest of windstorms. That's why they call them widow makers. It's such an occurrence that they even got a name for it. With water management, you want at least 100 yards away from your other three locations. It's that important. And make sure that you've chosen wisely. A still swamp is going to harbor all kinds of runoff, right? The old adage of flowing river or stream has less contaminants, don't buy into it. That just means those protozoas, bacteria, monarins, and viruses are traveling faster into your water bottle through your filtering system. When we're managing water, we think of the two primary contaminants. The biologicals, they're easy. Just boil your water, take care of it. But there's this emergent and growing contaminant category, the chemical contaminants, right? The heavier than metal or heavier than water lead-based contaminants, the PCBs. So it's not only boil your water to prevent Giardia, E. coli infections, removing water from both ends much faster than you can put it back in, especially without um, modern medical supports like intravenous fluids. We have to be more selective. We can't scoop water from that pastoral stream between the two farms because for generations there's been herbicides or pesticides or chemicals to control weevils put in those soils. So where do we get water from? Well, each area has water flowing naturally through the landscape. Here in Maine, the, the clay-rich, dense granite soils and bedrock uh, are perfect setups for wells, or artesian wells, and also springs coming out of the ground. Um, vernal pools, we can track this water to where it's coming out of the ground. Do you know how the water flows through your area in natural systems? Smoke is killing me. Hold on. I'm so sad about water. <laughs> Right, so selecting your water to minimize risk from uh, contamination chemically and biologically, boiling it, boiling everything that you use for eating and food service. It's one of the primary practices. If you want a surefire way of killing bacteria and viruses and minimizing risk to yourself and your community off grid for a long period of time, get used to doing a lot of boiling which means firewood consumption or alternative fuel consumption. I hope you've got that on your list. But yeah, fire is important. We need our fires not only to purify our waters, but to shape our tools, to cook our meat, all meat cooked, well done. Kill those pathogens in, in those tissues. There's a lot of them. 
Tulemia and rabbits, rabies, distemper, parvo. So be mindful. That fire is necessary, but it's a it's a spoiled brat. When you make a fire, it's going to demand your attention and all of that fuel wood. And if you don't give it one or the other, it'll either go out or it'll consume you. It'll wipe out your whole camp. It'll take the tools that you value and need with it. it might even take lives if you're not careful. So mind the fire as an incredibly critical piece of your kit that is dangerous, like a loaded firearm. The food piece, oh gosh. Well, there's gonna be people putting things in caches and buckets with you know, lids and there's gonna be folks who are hoarding and centralizing all of their food in their house, like a ripe berry waiting to be picked. The most dangerous aspect is gonna be the human element. Don't make yourself a target. When you're dealing with foods, you've got to have a seasonal mindset. You don't know if or when these conditions end, whatever conditions you find yourself in. And if they do end, what it's going to look like on the other side. You're putting things by for winter. It's not day to day. If it's day to day, you're in a bad location. So... being in the field, being in the woods, learning from the models that have existed out here for millennia, those other wild critters, that the calorie is king. It's the, it's the currency that moves through all of these systems. And if you burn more calories than you bring in, if you miss budget, you die. It's a simple rule. It's that important. If you wanna learn more about not just living off the landscape, but with the landscape to increase bounty, to give yourself a sense of peace, self-confidence, connection, and humility, to enrich your life on a day-to-day -day basis with that security, but also from that place of strength, fully appreciating the beauty of all that's around us as you amp it. And then come on down to our school at your own programs. We'd love to see you. Main Primitive Skills School. See you on the trail.